Hey everybody, this is Mr. Math Blog, and this lesson is uh, Constructing Arithmetic Sequences. This is the first part of this, and don't forget all your lessons can be found at Mr. Math Blog. Let's try that real quick. Okay, so here's Mr. Math Blog right here. Let me uh, squirt, uh, put that up there. Uh, you come to this site right here, and there's all kinds of classes that are up here, uh, and we are Integrated Math 1. So if you click that link right there, it'll take you to your lesson. So this one is not in here yet. It's going to go right down here underneath this one uh, in purple right here. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. So if you're stuck, uh, your lessons can be found there. Okay, so uh, let's uh, do this here. So you can order uh, tickets for the local theater online. There is a fee of $2 per order. Matinee tickets cost $10 each. Okay, so the total cost in dollars of ordering in matinee tickets online can be found by uh, this is our cost function, so C of N. Remember, we write, we say that as C of N. We've always done F of N, but this is C of N to represent the cost function equals 10 times N plus 2. Okay, this 10N is $10 for each ticket right there, plus the $2 uh, fee for per, uh, per order. Okay, so 10N plus 2. All right, so the table shows the cost of one, two, three, and four tickets. Okay, so let's go ahead and do um, uh, uh, complete the table above, and we're going to plug in ten, uh, n equal one, two, three, and four right there. So ten times one plus two. I did that right here. Okay, so ten times one is ten. Ten plus two is twelve. All right, so now we'll plug in two. Ten times two is twenty. Twenty plus two is twenty-two. 10 times 3 is 30, plus 2 is uh, 32, and finally 42 right there. All right, so let's just slide that up right there. So what is the domain of the sequence, and what is the range? Okay, the domain is always your input. So here's domain right here. It's your X's, and your top, your top row is always your X's right here, and the bottom row is always your Y's. If they're columns going up and down, the left column is your X's, the right column is your Y. So the left column would be domains, the right column would be range, okay? This is our domains, this is our range right here, okay? Easy enough. And then, uh, so let's find the difference between uh, each two consecutive terms in the sequence, okay? So we're going to do 22 minus 12, and then we'll do 32 minus 22, 42 minus 32. In each case, we get 10 on those. So that is called our common difference. I like to do this, you guys, as I go to the right, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, so the common difference is 10, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So suppose we extend the table for up to 15 tickets. Should we expect the difference between consecutive terms to be the same? And then explain. Well, yeah, uh, for any whole number n, the nth term is always 10n plus 2. So it's always this difference. Here's the d right here, plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. So the next term is going to be 10 times uh, the next term plus 2. Okay, so if this is 10 to the, if we're do, this is the nth term right here, the one after the nth term would be n plus 1. The one after the n plus 1 term would be n plus 2. In any case, they keep increasing by 10, so the difference of that is 10. Okay, so explain how the domain uh, is limited in this function. Well, we're only doing um, uh, whole numbers. Whole numbers are um, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but we're doing non-zero whole numbers, so we're just doing 1, 2, 3, 4, the counting numbers, okay? We're not doing fractions or decimals. All right, constructing rules for arithmetic sequences. Okay, in arithmetic sequence, the difference between the consecutive terms is always equal. In that last one, it was always 10, 10, 10. Okay, the difference is written uh, with the letter D is called the common difference. Okay, so an explicit rule for a sequence or the, uh, the nth term of an arithmetic sequence is defined as a function of n. Okay, a recursive rule for a sequence, we did this in a couple of, a couple of sections ago. Uh, we begin with the first term, recursive rules, you need that first term, and then the nth term is defined by relating it to the previous term. Remember that n minus 1 thing? So here's our formula for an explicit rule of an arithmetic sequence, okay? Make this your friend. Try to get used to this, you guys. This f of n is our nth term right here. It's this right here. Our nth term is f of n. This says my nth term. It is equal to, what's f of 1? f of 1 is our first term. 1 is n, uh, so it's our first term. So it's our first term plus our whatever n is, 
n minus 1 times d. Okay, we'll use this a lot. Don't worry, you'll get used to that, you guys. I know it's kind of weird at first. You'll get used to it, I promise. All right, so write a recursive rule and an explicit rule for the sequence described by each table. Okay, so here's the first one right here. This table shows the monthly balance in savings accounts with regular monthly deposits. The savings accounts begins with $2,000 and it has five hundred dollar deposits for each one so this two thousand is our first term it's it where n equals one it's our first term and check it out it goes up plus five hundred and then twenty five hundred plus five hundred is three thousand three thousand plus five hundred is thirty five hundred and then plus five hundred is four thousand right there so let's write a recursive rule okay so the recursive rule you have to know what your first term is for the recursive rule. So the first term is right here. It's the first number right there. F of 1 equals 2,000. And the common difference is D. So uh, the recursive rule would be, you got to say, okay, here's our first term. F of 1 is 2,000. And then our next term is going to be F of N. So it's going to be uh, the term, this is our previous term, f of n minus 1 plus 500. And that's for all the values after your second, ter your second term or more. Okay, for n greater than or equal to 2, well, n would go in here. So for f of 2, it would be, uh, if we plugged in f of 2 right here, it would be our first term plus 500. If we wanted to find our tenth term, we'd need to know our ninth term, okay? So on recursive rules, we'd have to write it out. So let's write an explicit rule. Okay, well, here's that formula for the explicit rule. The explicit rule says we need our first term. It's this 2,000 right here. And then um, uh, times, or plus n minus 1 times d. There's a parent emailing me about her daughter. Um, uh, so uh, D is 500, so we'll put 500 in right there, okay? All right, so uh, F of N is 2,000 plus N minus 1 times 500, okay? So here's the 2,000 is this first term. It's the F of 1 is first term, and I just plugged in our common difference, which is 500. It keeps going up. Plus 500, plus 500, plus 500. That's D right there, okay? So there's the formula right there. Now what I like to do is distribute that through, you guys, and then just clean it up. I think it's cleaner to leave it like this, you guys. So combine like terms, 2,000 minus 500 is uh, 1,500. So 500 in plus 1,500, okay? Your book might leave it like that, you guys. But boy, this sure looks a lot cleaner to me. So explicit rules lets us find you know say if I want to find my 20th term piece of cake I just plug in 20 right here 500 times 20 is going to get me um, uh, 5,000 right there and 5,000 plus this guy is going to be uh, lots of money right there okay all right so here it is right here so um, uh, we can just check let's plug in 3 right here so 500 times 3 is 1500 1500 plus 1500 gives us this term right here if we plugged in 5 500 times 5 is 2500 2500 plus 1500 gives us this term right here okay so we can find you know the the 90th term if we wanted to Okay, that's in the next lesson, by the way. So this time, this table shows the monthly balance in the savings account with regular monthly deposits. Okay, so we're going to write a recursive rule. Okay, so the, the F of 1 is our first term. 5,000 goes right here. And the common difference looks like it's going up 1,000 every time. So D is 1,000 right there. Okay, all right. So the recursive rule is always F of 1 equals, well, F of 1 equals that first term plus F of uh, F of n minus 1 plus the 1,000. It keeps adding a 1,000 right here, okay? So it's the previous term plus the 1,000, okay, where n is greater than or equal to 2. Because it, it, when n equals 1, well, n equals 1, they give it to us. Okay, so recursive rule is the 5,000 plus your previous term plus your common difference right there, okay? You get the hang of it. So let's write an explicit rule. There's our groovy formula. Make this your friend, you guys. This is a good friend of ours here, okay? Uh, so the first term is this 5,000 plus n minus 1 times d. Well, d is that 1,000 right there, okay? Your book would probably say that's the answer right there, but... Man, I like to clean this up and distribute the thousand through. So when I want to find like my 90th term, you guys, so if I clean that up, I get this right here. So if I want to find my 90th term, I just plug in 90 right there and multiply it times a thousand and then take it plus 4,000. Okay? The recursive rule, we'd have to keep going to find a third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, the sixth term, all the way up to the 87th term, the 88th term, the 89th term, finally the 90th term. Recursive rules aren't your friend when you're trying to find a specific term right there. The explicit rules are. Okay, so uh, Jeremy says that the C 
sequence 1, 8, 27, 64, 125 is not an arithmetic sequence. Is this correct? Okay, arithmetic sequence has a common difference. If I went from 1 to 8, it went up plus 7. From 8 to 27 is no longer plus 7. Even from 27 to 64, it looks like the difference is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to be a common difference. So, so Jeremy is correct. The sequence is not arithmetic because the difference between the consecutive terms is not always the same. These are actually perfect cubes, you guys. This is 1 to the third power, 1 cubed. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. 3 to the third, 4 to the third, 5 to the third, you'll get used to the cubic numbers. Okay, an arithmetic sequence has a common difference of 3. If we know the third term of the sequence is 15, how can we find the fourth term? Whoops, that should be term right there. Okay, so how can we find that fourth term? Let me, uh, T, E, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just coming over a cold, you guys, so it's getting a little bit better anyway. So, uh, anyway, so how are we going to find that term? We just add 3 to the last term, you guys. So if they give us the third term, and you know what D is right here, the third term is 15, so I'm going to add 3 because D is 3, so add 3 to that 15. That will give me the fourth term. So the fifth term would be 21. I'd add 3. The sixth term would be 24. I just if you know, just keep adding three. Okay, this table shows the number of plates left after uh, at a buffet uh, after n hours. So write a recursive rule and an explicit rule for the arithmetic sequence represented by the table. Okay, so here's f of one. This is our first term right here. Looks like our difference is let's see. Looks like minus fourteen. If I'm doing my arithmetic right, it's going down this time. Fourteen. So there's. The first term right there, yep, it's going down by 14 right there. Okay, so D is equal to negative 14. So the recursive rule is you always got to start with your first term, and then uh, then you say the rest of the terms for N. I should have wrote for N greater than or equal to 2 right here. I didn't. So just to pretend like there's an N greater than or equal to 2, okay? We can do that right now. So let me put a little, little comma here uh, for, for N greater than or equal to 2. And i got to go get my math symbol right here. Yeah, good. Greater than or equal to 2. Whoops, i got to put a little space right there. All right. Okay, sorry about that. I'm do I, I saved these lessons for other math teachers, so that's why I'm, I'm correcting these as I go along right here. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? All right, so the explicit rule, you guys. Uh, wait, let me go back. I'm going to go back and copy and paste that. Oh, whoops. Woo! Sorry. Uh, I want to go back. I want to copy and paste that right over there, okay? I didn't know I had another page here. Sorry about the delay there, you guys. Okay, so the explicit rule, here's our formula. F of 1 plus N minus 1 times D. F of 1 is at 155. D is negative 14. Distribute the negative 14 through. Negative 14 times negative 1 is plus 14. And then when I add these two terms, you get 169 minus 14N, okay? Doesn't this look a lot cleaner than this right here? Your book will give you this. I think this looks a lot sweeter right here, okay? All right. All right, so uh, what is the recursive rule for the sequence uh, f of n plus uh, equals 2 plus negative 3 uh, n minus 1 uh, times n minus 1? And how do we know? Well, okay, well, let's just find the first term right here, okay? So I just plugged in 1 right here, okay? So it's going to be this 2 plus negative 3 times 1 minus 1. Well, that's just 0, you guys, so we get 2. So the first term is 2. Okay, the second term. Okay, I'm just going to plug in 2 right here. 2 minus 1 is right there. 2 minus 1 is uh, 1, and negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, so it's 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Okay, the third term. Okay, so the third term, this is uh, 3 minus 1, so I get 2 minus 6 or negative 4. Okay, the fourth term is negative 7. Okay, check this out. It's going from 2 to negative 1 to negative 4 to negative 7. It's decreasing by 3. So the sequence is that where the first term is 2 and D is negative 3. So the recursive rule is here's the first term and then... Um, and then uh, it's always the previous term. Boy, there's another mistake. I made a lot of mistakes at school today, too. Getting to be a little, that's my cold, I think, you guys. Anyway, uh, let's see if I have to copy that. So, Okay. All right. If you're in my class, I'm going to assign that for your homework, you guys. And if you guys would, would you guys click like? That helps encourage me. And don't forget your lessons are at mrmathblog.com.